Despite everything going on with supply chains, lockdowns and chip shortages right now, Apple by all accounts is on track to launch the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro just like clockwork in September this year. And it looks like we're going to be getting some big changes to selfies. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. Step away from the keys that spell clickbait and I'll explain. Until now, the iPhone has featured autofocus cameras or AF cameras for the main shooters on the back. However, the selfie camera, because of the small space that it uses and the fact that Apple can kind of assume that the phone will be within arm's length, had a fixed focal distance. That means it will almost always be in focus, regardless of where you are for selfies. It also meant, however, that Apple needed to make sure that basically everything was pretty much in focus like with a webcam so that being at the wrong distance didn't mean that everything went blurry on your face this year however according to Kuoming Chi Apple is moving to a shallower depth of field in their selfie and FaceTime cameras you might have heard of shallow depth of field anyway it's basically what gives that cool blurry background in photos while keeping the subject perfectly in focus it looks great it looked so great that Apple actually used the depth mapping capabilities of the true depth camera system that Face ID introduced to offer portrait mode selfies. Originally introduced with the iPhone 7 Plus, the first iPhone with dual rear cameras, the iPhone 7 Plus used the stereoscopic data from the two cameras to build a depth map and artificially blur uh, background areas that were further away from the camera. It was imperfect, but nonetheless, it was revolutionary. Sometimes the edges wouldn't be quite detected accurately. Anything with transparency would be a real mess for the system. Uh, so glassware, for example, would just kind of disappear. But for faces, it was surprisingly good from day one. When the iPhone X brought this tech to the selfie camera the next year, it made use of the dot projector and the infrared cameras to build a more accurate depth map, basically using LiDAR, to a degree and got pretty good at faces. And now with iPhone 10 and its true depth camera, it really delivers a breakthrough in the photos you can take for selfies. Because now with selfies, you can take portrait mode photos as well. While the camera itself in the iPhone 12 and 13 these days has a fixed focus f2.2 aperture camera, the iPhone's processor uses the data that it has about distances to different parts of the image to artificially add that lens blur or bokeh to the image. Now, it is imperfect. Here, for example, is a challenge as the dot projectors are projecting just that, dots, and seeing kind of the closest thing within a certain area of the frame, rather than using the natural blur that the lens with a shallower focal point would see. So you often see sharp background through semi-transparent areas like light hair and the rest of the background up to the edge of that is blurred. So I know, I know this is a lot of background information to say that the images from iPhone 14 selfie cameras will most likely look a lot more natural and have real bokeh on the backgrounds and sharper focus on your face. Now this is obviously going to be useful for people like influencers for Instagram who take a lot of selfies, but also bloggers who might want to use the, uh, the front facing camera so they can see that they are in frame while shooting stuff. Now, it is always difficult to use a camera that is pointing at you with a screen next to it because your eye is naturally drawn to the image of yourself. So you always look like you're kind of looking off to the side by the camera and not into the camera, which is why using something like the teleprompter that I use for doing these shows is quite helpful. By the way, this is off prompter at the moment. This is not written on the screen. I'm not pressing the button. That's why it's not moving. Um, but for years, the iPhone cameras have been getting closer and closer to what you can do with a real large sensor camera on both sides of the iPhone and often through computational photography. Taking data and simulating things like better dynamic range by taking multiple images and then combining them using the brightest parts of some, the darkest parts of others, and also using data to simulate the depth of field and how far things are away from the camera and how that would look using a bigger sensor and a bigger lens. But this is a little bit different. Just like when Apple added sensor shift image stabilization to the main cameras where tiny motors move the sensor 5,000 times a second to compensate for your weak, shaky human hands, this is an improvement to give the computer better data right from the sensor to work with. As good as computational photography gets, starting with better data to process will always give you better results. It's that classic garbage in, garbage out issue. So when Apple can squeeze a better lens or more, more capable sensor into the phones, it's always going to help. So, if you want blurry AF selfies, the iPhone 14 may well be the iPhone for you. 
thanks so much for watching and tolerating my kind of clickbaity but not really title and we'll be answering more of your questions again in the next show so leave your iCave answers down in the comments section using the hashtag and send me your Apple desk setups over on Twitter to be featured on a future show. Thanks to the patrons you can join them at iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon and we'll see you in the next one.